And today, Secretary of Defense Ash Carter saying 200 U.S. Special Operations Forces are being sent to Iraq to target ISIS. Right now, Arizona Congresswoman and the first female fighter pilot to fly in combat, Congresswoman Martha McSally, goes on the record. Nice to see you. Good to see you, Greta. Uh, it's rather, I mean, if, if it weren't so serious, it would be rather disturbing that the president says ISIS is contained, as Joint Chief of Staff says it's not contained. It's like, who's on first? What is the problem here? I mean, well, does everybody know? Yeah, well, they're not contained, and General Dunford is asked to give his best military advice when he's testifying before Congress, so I'm glad that he actually admitted that. Uh, look, that hearing went on for several hours, and uh, even though there's some increased uh, deployments, there's still more of the same gradualism and incrementalism. This threat has been growing and metastasizing since they declared the caliphate 17 months ago. Well, but, but I mean, that's what's so disturbing. I mean, the president is commander-in-chief, and we have some maps that we could put up on yeah. here to show. I mean, if he would just look at our, our, our maps to right. see where we've, where, where we've isolated ISIS, you could, you, you could tell that, uh, look, at, here's November 2015. That's the ISIS. Look at that map right there. That's where ISIS is. Now let's go yeah. back. Look at that. That's February right. 2015. I mean, I mean, how in the world is our commander-in-chief thinking this, that it's contained? And, and not only that, but they've got influence in up to 19 different countries. They have a very sophisticated social media campaign. We have what we know about is 30,000 foreign fighters from 100 different countries that are flowing into Iraq and Syria. We have 900 investigations in all 50 states in America. Uh, Libya is now becoming another safe haven and exporting their terror, what we saw on the Sinai. This is more metastasizing, which also they admitted today, that this is growing and metastasizing, uh, and this administration has not seriously had a strategy to defeat and destroy them. All right, look at side by side. President Obama just take 30 seconds to turn on Fox News. He'd know this is not contained when he right. looks at the t from t February until just now. Uh, all right, well, today the big news is that we're going to put uh, special ops on the ground. Yeah. But here, here's the thing that I thought was interesting. Is, and this is where the, where, uh, the general's probably in conflict again with the president because mm -hmm. General Dunford said uh, that we're going to go where the enemy is, meaning they're going to ignore borders. So well, everyone could talk about dropping these troops, these special ops right. in Iraq. They're going into Syria. Well, they use some carefully uh, worded phrasing to say that they would be positioned to be able to conduct unilateral operations in Syria. Again, this is just a, a small increase. He said increase. we're going to ignore yes, borders. We're going exactly. to where the enemy is. And we've been calling, I've been calling for special operation troops, for unleashing air power, for doing more to defeat and destroy their command and control, their logistics capability. This appears to be a shift, but I'm concerned that it's more incrementalism. They also admitted today that they considered the truck drivers of the oil trucks that we finally started bombing to be non-combatants. I, I just can't believe that. You we know, dropped you leaflets telling them to get away from their trucks before we actually hit them. You know, you say that it's a shift, but, you know, um, I actually think that the military has been pulling his hair out trying yeah. to get the president to, you know, open up his eyes because they're even former head of defense intel, Lieutenant General yeah. Michael Flynn over on CNN yeah. with Jake Tapper. He told Jake Tapper that leading up to 2012 election, the president's advisors ignored intelligence predicting the rise of ISIS because, he did, because it didn't meet their elective narrative. Right. And he called him JV, uh, of course, we know in January of 2014. I mean, right. what, is, what is going on with this president? It, it seems like this president campaigned on wanting to get out of the Middle East. He's been the reluctant commander in chief wanting to shift to a Asia, ignore this threat. Uh, been very myopically also focused on the nuclear deal with Iran, which is related to this because. Our Sunni Arab partners in the region are more concerned about Iran, which is a militant Islam, great state sponsor of terror, and, and they're, they're refusing to take action against ISIS. So, but, but he's almost got a viewpoint of one. If he's got the military yeah. people and if he's got the general right. now saying publicly something directly right. contrary to him, which is actually a big deal. I mean, he is a viewpoint yep. of one. I agree. He is detached. He's listening to the wrong people. His tone has been off. His understanding of the facts have been off. The American people are now deeply concerned about this threat and their impact on the homeland. Uh, and President Obama continues to think the largest enemy he has is the GOP. So I'm glad to see that his uh, military advisors are finally speaking some of the truth. But I am still concerned from the testimony today. It's more of the same sort of reluctance. Uh, the more of the same, maybe we're going to do a little bit more. And we learn in Vietnam that gradualism does not work. We need to look at them as a state. We need to identify their uh, centers of gravity, their critical capabilities, and we need to unleash American air power in a way that they have been reluctant to do in order to destroy them where they are. Congressman, thank you. And as always, thank you for your service, as I always say to you. It's nice to see you. Absolutely. Good to see you.